Start with an old pair of pants and a pool noodle. You're gonna slide each end of the pool noodle into the legs of the pants. Then I need to roll them up a little bit so they fit. Now I'm going to put a pair of shoes onto the end of this pool noodle. I'm gonna tie them nice and snug so they stay fit. And then I'm just gonna stand this little guy up. These do stand up pretty well. The noodle holds up well in the shoes. Then on top, I'm gonna to grab my ghost decoration from Dollar Tree. The inside of it is styrofoam. So I could take a wooden skewer and push it into the styrofoam and then take the other end of the skewer and push it through the pool noodle. Then I just arrange the fabric, arrange the little arms, and I have a cute little ghost for Halloween. I made a pair of these and they are gonna sit in my entryway to welcome guests all season. I hope this inspired you to make a cute little Halloween decor item from Dollar Tree. For this project, you're going to need some plastic tablecloths, pumpkin pails, and some tomato cages, and some lights. I'm gonna start by placing the tomato cage upside down. With the part that sticks into the ground, I'm going to pull them all in together. Next, I'm gonna take a pumpkin pail and place it upside down onto all of the prongs. Next, I'm gonna take my lights and I'm going to use some painter's tape so that I can hold this in place at the top. But I'm going to wrap the lights around the outside of the tomato cage. You could alternatively use some Christmas lights or holiday lights as well. Next, I'll be using a round plastic table cloth from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take the tablecloth and open it up. Once I have it all the way open, I'm gonna place it over the top of the tomato cage. So now I need to make some eyes and I'm gonna be using some gaffer's tape here and I've made a template out of a piece of paper. So what I'm gonna do is trace it with a piece of chalk. Now I remove the tape and now I'm just gonna cut this piece out. So here's the finished eye and I can rub the chalk off. One of the reasons I'm using this tape is so that it will be okay in the elements while it's outside. Now I'm gonna go into my ghost and I'm gonna place the eye onto my ghost. Now I'm gonna repeat this process to get my second eye. Now you could easily stop here with one ghost, but I'm gonna make a few more and then I'm gonna show you where we're gonna be putting them. Here are all three ghosts lined up for the trick-or-treaters. And I hope this inspires you to create some ghosts of your own. Again, I'm Chas from Chas's Crazy Creations. Thanks for watching Home Talk, and I'll see you next time. So we're gonna start this project with a lot of room and some saran wrap. I'm essentially going to place the saran wrap around the top of my thigh, and I'm going to make my way around a couple of layers. And I'm standing up because I wanna make sure that I get it around my waist just so that the saran wrap doesn't drop down. So once I go around my waist once, I move back down towards my thigh. I'm gonna keep moving all the way down my leg to my heel. And then we're gonna make sure that everything is smoothed out before we move on to our next step. So we'll be back. So now I'm coming back up with my saran wrap back up my leg just to continue that barrier before we move on to the next step. And I'm just ripping it off. And now we're gonna move on to our next step which encompasses using duct tape. Now like the saran wrap, we're gonna be going around the top of my thigh with our duct tape. And we're just gonna be making our way down my leg towards my heel. And you wanna make sure you're not wrapping this too tight so it cuts off circulation. So just kind of place it, but you wanna make sure you're covering the entire surface. And you're gonna make your way all the way down and then we're gonna cover the heel. So now that I've covered my entire left leg, we're gonna cut off the saran wrap. And then I'm going to kind of gather that uh, just to make sure it's not wrapped around my waist anymore. And we're going to make sure that we can actually get this cast, duct tape cast of my leg off of my foot. So I'm gonna be taking some scissors and I'm actually gonna be cutting up the side of my cast and then we are going to carefully remove it. So to remove it, we are going to start from the top of my thigh and we're gonna kind of slide it down gradually 
And then you can always cut more on the sides as needed, but don't try to go up too far, moving and shuffling it down until I am able to completely slide it off of my heel without having to rip it further. And now that I've been able to remove it, we are going to get ready for our next step. So we're gonna take our silver duct tape and we are going to repair the tear and just like go over it horizontally. And then from there, we are gonna start filling the leg up with stuffing and pool noodles. I found it really helpful using a pool noodle first as I was trying to make that repair, just to help create that barrier and made it a lot easier to apply the duct tape. So there really isn't an exact science to this, but we wanna make sure that we're filling this out, like I said, and I wanna make sure that I'm using um, a pool noodle to try and give it some structure. I got these pool noodles from the Dollar Tree and I cut them in half just because I'm going to be kind of layering them together just to fill out the shin and calf part of the leg and then giving it more structure towards the upper thigh. Um, so we're also gonna be using pillow batting. So you can use this, you can buy it on Amazon or you could just take a pillow from your house and pull the stuffing out of it like I did. And then you can start to kind of uh, place the batting in and around where you put the pool noodles. So this is not an exact science. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. So be patient with yourself and just kind of take your time with this step just because you want to make sure that you do it right. And this may look a little different for everybody, depending on what supplies you have available to you. You can also experiment with putting a like wood dowel or a broomstick or something in the center as well to help build that structure. So I wanna encourage you to be creative and try working with something that you have around your house. So now that my leg is fully stuffed with batting and pool noodles, we are going to be taking our next supply, which is going to be our Dollar Tree orange duct tape uh, to add to this. And I'm just gonna be taking my duct tape in smaller strips than I did when I made the cast of my leg. And I'm just gonna be covering all of the silver. So we're just gonna be going over it nice and even, horizontally up and down the entire leg. And there's a reason why I chose orange. We'll get to that in just a moment. But now that my leg is covered in orange duct tape, and it's completely stuffed. We are going to be moving on to the next step, which is actually putting on a witch's sock to the leg. And we are going to slide this over the leg all the way up. And then we are going to be applying a shoe. Now with this step of applying a shoe, for this part, you're probably gonna wanna either go to a thrift store to get some old boots, or if you have some that you feel comfortable using for this project that will be outside for an extended period of time, then you are free to use that as well. But depending on what you wanna spend budget-wise, um, this could be as uh, cheap as you'd like it to be just by using things you already have. Um, but I'm really, really happy with how this leg turned out. And now I need to do the other one. So we're gonna do this on the other side as well. And then we're gonna be back for the finished product. I hope you feel inspired to try this witch leg Halloween project. It's perfect for outdoors. You could put it in a bush or in an urn. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk and I will see you next time.